Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to uh, pass values to functions with arguments. This is a big one. Parameters are variables that act as placeholders for the values that are to be input into a function when it is called. When a function is defined, it is typically be uh, defined along with one or more parameters. The actual values are the input or passed into the function when it is called when it is called are known as arguments. This is a function with two parameters, parameter one and parameter two. Parameter two, one, parameter two. Uh, this is a test function. Then we call test function. If we say test function, hello world. So what it's doing is console logging param one, which in this case is hello, and then param two, console log here, which is world. We have passed two arguments, hello world, inside the function. Param one will equal hello, param two will equal world. Note, you could call test fun again with different arguments and the parameter would take on the value of the new arguments. So let's do that real quickly. Um, if we moved this function over to here, we could console.log. No, we don't have to console log. We can just call test fun and then we could say, uh, for example, Costa Rica. And then here we would see that it would spell out Costa Rica. Yeah, it spells it out as uh, the first value and the second value. Uh, so we want to, <clears throat> and any any word could, you know, United States. So the test function is actually printing out United States, and that's the way that it works. Um, so. If what they're asking us to do here is to create a function called function with args. So we can just copy that and just say function, function with args. And then this is the, uh, this is the structure of a function. You wanna just remember function plus an empty parameters initially, and then the um, curly braces. And you don't need to put semicolons when you're defining functions. Um, so we create this function. So that's what we've done now. We've created the function and we want it to accept two arguments without uh, two arguments and outputs the sum of the arguments. So we'll say um, one, two, and then we want to add them together and output that. So we want to return one plus two. So theoretically, if this works properly, we should be able to console.log a uh, function with args of 22 and 2, and that should give us 24. So what's happening here? Function with args, basically, we're going down through the interpreter, right? Function with args, our function with args is equal to their console logging a minus b, which is 10 minus 5, and that's where we're getting this from. That's why it's outputting 5, because we're saying 10 and 5, 10 and 5, 10 and 5. And then we're in the interpreter, we're saying function with args, which is different than our function with args. So we're setting a new function, function with args, 1, 2. And then we're returning 1 plus 2. And then when we console log this, we say function with args, 22 plus 2. So we're taking it up here, function with args, and then the first argument is 1. So we're setting this 22 to 1 which happens here, and then 2 is here, uh, which goes 2. And that gets us 24 in the console. I'm not sure if this is actually going to work because I'm not console logging it. I'm actually uh, just returning the function, which is smart overall, but cool. So it's saying that this doesn't work. Why does this not work? Function with args should uh, 1, 2 should output 3. So they don't want us to console log here. They want us to do it within the function if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to console.log one, two. And uh, if we run the tests, it seems like it passes. So yeah, again, what they're saying, you can add this down here too. You can just say function with args. That gives you the three that they're looking for. Right, one and two. The next one, seven and nine, which gives you 16, right? you'll see down here, you get your 16. And then uh, with two numbers 
after you define it, call function with args with two numbers after you define it. I'm not really sure what that means. But essentially, all you have to do is write this function. So this is the key. This is the code that passes the test. Um, the main thing that they're trying to teach you here is that you create a function like this guy, and then you're then you need to call the function, right? So I just ran the test and this didn't work. What we need to do now is we need to call this argument. So function with args. And they just want us to call it uh, with two numbers after you define it. So the two numbers that we define it with, let's say, I like 22 and two because it's kind of obvious that when it becomes 24 that you're passing in two numbers. If you were to do, uh, it would actually work with 22 as a string and then you'd have 222. Two, two. I think this would actually pass the test as well. Oh no, they say two numbers. So not two, two, not two strings like that. So yeah, 24 would get us the right answer. And so what they're essentially saying here is that you, f you, you create your functions and then within these two um, brackets, you can have any sort of variable. You could call this uh, variable one and this one variable two. These are what you get to make up because they're scoped within the function. So this would work as well. See, we get to 24, which shows us that they're actually adding them together. If we ran the test on this, it would also work. So what they're trying to do is just say that you can throw in parameters with your function based on this. The only time that you need to use this variable one syntax is here because the function remembers that the first valuable value is saved as variable one and the second value is saved as variable two. And that's what gives you the, uh, yeah, that's how this works. Uh, this is tricky at first, but it also is the core background of JavaScript. So understanding this is, is great. If you're not really understanding this, I hope that if you could rewind this video and it might make sense. Um, if it's still completely um, confusing, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a video that makes this a little bit more clear. But at the end of the day, um, this is code that would pass the test. So I hope this helped and we'll see you in the next lesson.